Hello YouTube, this is DVD Review Studios here, and today I shall be doing a very highly requested video on the channel. This is going to be quite the mammoth task, a complete collection overview of my entire DVD collection featuring every single movie box set edition that I own going for every title individually. I've not done one of these for a couple of years now, my last one was in 2018, which I very much appreciate all the comments and views that video received especially now with that currently being my most viewed video on the channel. And so, since it's been a little while since I've done a collection video of sorts, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to start 2022 with that very video, since a lot of comments frequently ask for that sort of thing. So I thought I would go ahead and provide on that note. And so we shall be going through the entire collection, beginning with all the movies that I own, which then transcends into animated TV shows some of my personal favourites, and then the overspill for the majority is just TV shows in general, stuff that sadly won't fit on the shelves anymore that I have to store elsewhere, but I thought for this video I'll bring everything together. So anyway, let us begin with the top shelf going through the movie collection. And so beginning with the top shelf, first up we have the Rocky Anthology box set, which contains the first five Rocky films. Rocky Balboa, which I very much enjoyed. And the spin-off movies, we have Creed and, of course, Creed 2. A few movies starring Jack Nicholson, we have A Few Good Men. Philadelphia, which is a very enjoyable film. The Departed. The Bucket List. As Good As It Gets. Then we move into a few films starring Robert De Niro. We have The Godfather Trilogy. Casino, which is a very good Scorsese film. Raging Bull. The two Cape Fear movies, the original 60s film and then the Scorsese remake. A couple of films starring Al Pacino. We have Dog Day Afternoon. Glengarry Glen Ross. Midnight Cowboy, which is a fantastic film. The Long Goodbye. Another Dustin Hoffman film, Rain Man. And The Graduate. Rumblefish, which is a very memorable film. I loved Mickey Rourke's performance in this one. Requiem for a Dream, a very iconic soundtrack to that film. And next we have several films starring one of my all-time favourite actors, and that is Edward Norton, beginning with his acting debut in Primal Fear. The People vs. Larry Flint, Woody Harrelson plays a great role in this as well. Rounders, which is a very fun film. American History X. 25th Hour. The Illusionist. Birdman. The Talented Mr. Ripley. The Limey, which is a very interesting Steven Soderbergh film. Say Anything. Million Dollar Baby. Then we have some films starring Robin Williams. We have Dead Poet Society. One Hour Photo. Good Will Hunting, a phenomenal performance from both Robin Williams and Matt Damon. Insomnia. Shattered Glass, which really does illustrate the acting talents of Hayden Christensen, known for the, I guess, flack he received for portraying Anakin Skywalker in the Star Wars prequels. Pay It Forward. The Virgin Suicides. What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Barton Fink. Lost in Translation. If, which is a phenomenal coming-of-age film starring Malcolm McDowell. Oh, Lucky Man. October Sky with a phenomenal performance by Jake Gyllenhaal. Romper Stomper. The Next Three Days. Once Were Warriors. Boogie Nights, Magnolia, 
Being John Malkovich, which is one of my all-time favorite films. Flashdance. Seven. Panic Room. Jerry Maguire. Next up we have a load of films starring Liam Neeson, beginning with Taken. Taken 2. I did own Taken 3 at one point, but it's a very forgettable film and something I just don't plan on revisiting. The Grey, which I quite liked. Nonstop. A Walk Among the Tombstones, which I enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would. Chloe, which is a very bizarre and overall very forgettable film. Then we have some films starring Tom Hanks, beginning with Castaway. The Green Mile. The Terminal, which is a very humble film, very amusing. Catch Me If You Can, where Leonardo DiCaprio really does steal the show in this one. Saving Mr. Banks. Sully, which I quite liked. And Captain Phillips, featuring one of my favourite performances from Tom Hanks. Brazil. Twelve Monkeys. Then we have a couple of foreign films, beginning with The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. The Hunt, starring Mads Mikkelsen. City of God. And one of my favourite foreign films, La N. Moving on to shelf number two, we have Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, a very evocative drama. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. The Truman Show, which is an incredible film starring Jim Carrey. The Princess Bride. Then we have the Tarantino section of the collection of which any titles that are missing I own on Blu-ray, beginning with Reservoir Dogs. Pulp Fiction. Kill Bill, both Volume 1 and, of course, Volume 2. Jackie Brown. Death Proof. Inglorious Bastards. Django Unchained. And True Romance, which Tarantino did not direct this film, he actually wrote the film. Big Trouble in Little China, which is a fantastic John Carpenter film, one that I would like to upgrade to Blu-ray to go with my other Carpenter movies. The Goonies, Gladiator, V for Vendetta, Children of Men, Stranger Than Fiction, Mr. Brooks, The Pursuit of Happiness, Seven Pounds, The Fugitive, then we have the Indiana Jones trilogy, beginning with, of course, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Temple of Doom. And The Last Crusade, my personal favourite of the trilogy and an incredible ending to this film. <clears throat> the Prestige. The Go of the Dragon Tattoo remake directed by David Fincher starring Rooney Mara and Daniel Craig, a fantastic movie, one of my personal favourites. Brick. Training Day. Memento. Atomic Blonde. The Usual Suspects. And we have a couple of films starring Keanu Reeves. We have Speed, which is a very good film. And Point Break. Next up is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Pan's Labyrinth. Stand By Me. The Machinist. Phone Booth. Shutter Island, an incredible performance by Leonardo DiCaprio. Eight Mile. A Beautiful Mind. The Boondock Saints. Sherlock Holmes. Falling Down. Next up, we have several films starring Jason Statham, beginning with Bullets, which is very underappreciated in my opinion. The Bank Job. 
The Crank movies, which are absolutely ludicrous. The sequel, in particular, does leave a lot to be desired, and then some. The Transporter films, which are okay. The first one is obviously the superior one. The sequels, again, leave quite a lot to be desired. Wanted, which is a very silly premise, but surprisingly quite a well-acted film, in particular by James McAvoy. And then we lead into more British-themed films, beginning with Bronson, a phenomenal performance by Tom Hardy. Then we have some Shane Meadows movies, we have This Is England, and the follow-ups, which are sort of TV movies slash miniseries. So we have This Is England at 86, 88, and 90. Summer's Town, which was a very enjoyable film. Dead Man's Shoes, which is a very dark and overall very poetic film. Very well performed by Paddy Considine. Then we have several films directed by Alan Clark, beginning with Scum. Made in Britain, which was the debut of actor Tim Roth. The Firm. Boston Kickout. 24 Hour Party People. Sorted. Then we have the Train Spotting movies, Train Spotting and T2 Train Spotting. Wonderland. Miranda. Sex Traffic. Tuesday. Crime and Punishment, a fantastic adaptation of the original novel by Dostoevsky, and I love John Sim's portrayal of the main protagonist, Raskolnikov. Another John Sim film, Code of a Killer. And Submarine, which is based on one of my favourite books, wonderfully directed by Richard Ayoade. Next up, we have a couple of Guy Ritchie movies. We have Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, which is fantastic. And Snatch, which I quite enjoyed as well. And then next up we have the James Bond movies from the Ultimate Collector's box set. Very bizarre and funny story behind how I obtained that box set. I basically found it in the middle of nowhere in perfect condition. You can check out that video on the channel for more on that particular story. But let's go through the Bond films. So first up we have Doctor No from Russia With Love. Goldfinger. Thunderball, You Only Live Twice, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, Diamonds Are Forever, Live and Let Die, The Man with the Golden Gun, The Spy Who Loved Me, Moonraker, For Your Eyes Only, Octopussy, a View to a Kill, The Living Daylights, License to Kill, Goldeneye, Tomorrow Never Dies, The World is Not Enough, and of course, a Die Another Day. Next up we have the Dark Knight Trilogy box set with the lenticular cover. The Blade Trilogy box set, featuring the original three films with Wesley Snipes. The Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films, beginning with Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2, the two-disc edition, likewise with Spider-Man 3. And we have the Amazing Spider-Man films, starring Andrew Garfield as the first and the very underwhelming sequel. And that leads us into the sci-fi section of the collection, where we have the Animatrix, which is a series of short films acting as a kind of sort of prequel to the Matrix trilogy. Then we have the Matrix movies, the sequel, Reloaded, and the third film, Revolutions. And then a very fun documentary, which I would highly recommend checking out if you haven't done so, The Matrix Revisited. A very unique look behind the scenes of the original Matrix film. The Blade Runner movies, the Blade Runner Final Cut, and then of course the sequel, 2049. Galaxy Quest. Starship Troopers, which is a fantastic film. The Terminator, and the Terminator sequel, Judgment Day, which I got in a very bizarre kind of tin edition which I've removed off the shelf since it was very clunky. 
Next up we have a Scanner Darkly, which I very much enjoyed for the rotoscoping animation techniques. Cloverfield. Bicentennial Man. Signs. Then we have the Star Wars films, we have the prequel trilogy, The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and of course, Revenge of the Sith. And then the original trilogy, we have Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. And we also have the bonus features disc, which I believe was only included in the original trilogy box set. And this has some very unique bonus material in relation to the original trilogy films. Then we have the Clone Wars cartoon series by Gendy Tartakovsky, both Volume 1 and Volume 2. Next up we have the Planet of the Apes 1 through to 5 box set of the original 5 films, which I'll be honest, that's one of my favourite sets in the collection. And I did do quite the extensive collection overview, looking at all the Planet of the Apes films, including the Tim Burton remake, which I'm not really a big fan of. E.T. The War of the Worlds remake starring Tom Cruise, which I'll be honest, is kind of a guilty pleasure film of mine. I genuinely quite like it. Nine with the little sock puppet characters. iRobot. Independence Day. The Fifth Element. Gattaca, which is a very underrated film in my honest opinion. I love the performance from Jude Law in this film. Frequently Asked Questions About Time Travel, a very funny British comedy. The Tron movies, we have Tron, the 20th Anniversary Edition, and the sequel, Tron Legacy, which I loved the soundtrack to. The Black Hole, which is a very dark and quite twisted film, very interesting stuff. Limitless, the unrated extended cut. Dread, which was a phenomenal film, I would love to one day see a sequel to this movie. A Sound of Thunder. Looper, which I thought was okay. Primer. And wrapping up this shelf, we have Event Horizon. And rounding out the sci-fi collection, we have The Butterfly Effect. Edge of Tomorrow. Equilibrium. Fahrenheit 451. Demolition Man, which I really enjoyed Wesley Snipes in this film. AI, Artificial Intelligence, one of my favourite Steven Spielberg movies. Star Trek First Contact, fantastic film. I love anything that features the Borg in particular from Star Trek. Laser Blast, which is a hilariously poor science fiction film. Next up we have the Lord of the Rings trilogy box set, which features the three films. And then we have the prequel films, the Hobbit movies. So we have An Unexpected Journey, The Desolation of Smaug. And the final film, The Battle of the Five Armies. Next up is Schindler's List. Saving Private Ryan. The Pianist, a phenomenal performance by Adrian Brody in that film. Apocalypse Now. Bridge of Spies. The original Inglorious Bastards. U571. Lawrence of Arabia, Basic, A Bridge Too Far, Persepolis, which is one of my favourite animated films, very enjoyable. Then we have a John Woo film, Heroes Shed No Tears, Braveheart, The Deer Hunter, The Great Escape, then we have a couple of Western movies. We have Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. A box set of Clint Eastwood films featuring a fistful of dollars for a few dollars more. The Good, the Bad and the Ugly and Hang 'em High. True Grit. Then we move into the horror section of the collection. We have the Evil Dead trilogy. So the first, second and then Army of Darkness. The Evil Dead remake, which I enjoyed a lot more than I thought I would. Very good film. The Chucky film, so we have Child's Play. Child's Play 2, which I love the ending to this film. And of course, Child's Play 3. Bride of Chucky. 
Beetlejuice, Stay Alive, Samurai Zombie, Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2, Aliens, Alien vs Predator, Hannibal Rising, which was a very interesting departure away from the Anthony Hopkins films, really enjoyed this one, The Crow, the fly of the first and second film. The Lost Boys. The Last House on the Left. The Gremlins movies in a double feature pack. Magic. Both 28 Days and 28 Weeks Later. Demons in My Head, an absolutely god-awful film. Krampus. Jaws, Lake Placid, and then this leads us into various, I guess, monster-themed films, mostly shark-related, so we have Shark Night, Open Water, and then we get into the more sort of low-budget shark films with Sharktopus, Jaws in Japan, which is absolutely awful, Sharknado, Sharknado 2, and number 3. Sand Sharks, which is pathetically hilarious, likewise with Planet of the Sharks. Shark in Venice. Ghost Shark. Rogue, which I genuinely quite enjoyed this film, very interesting to say the least. A unique box set my friend Tim gifted to me, which is the Sons of Kong box set featuring ten ape-themed films. And then we round off this shelf with... King Kong Lives. And continuing the animal theme, I guess you could call it, we have various documentaries beginning with one of my all-time favourite sort of guilty pleasure shows, and that is Monster Quest, a very unintentionally funny series exploring the paranormal. So that's the best of box set, which contains episodes from season one and season four. We have the complete second season, which overall had some of the more funnier episodes. And then season three. And then some more kind of serious sort of documentaries and kind of childhood favourites. We have Prehistoric Park uh, featuring Nigel Marvin, likewise with Walking with Dinosaurs, the specials. The Ballad of Big Al, which was also a Walking with Dinosaurs special. And Walking with Cavemen, the complete series. There are also Walking with Dinosaurs, the original series. Uh, Walking with Mammals and Walking with Monsters, of which I own all of those. There's little promotional DVDs, which I have a box of as well, which you can check out that video on the channel if you're interested, where I do a collection overview of all of those. Next up, we have the Crocodile Hunter Collision Course movie, which is a fantastic film starring Steve Irwin. March of the Penguins. A couple of Slavoj Žižek documentaries, we have The Pavet's Guide to Cinema, parts 1 through to 3, and then The Pavet's Guide to Ideology, some very insightful and unique opinions delivered in both of those films. Now we have more sort of comedy-based stuff, we have This is Spinal Tap, which is a very funny film. The Room, which is arguably one of the worst movies ever made and is overall a laugh-a-minute style film for all the wrong reasons. So much so, it inspired a film in itself based on a book written by one of the creatives involved on The Room, and that's The Disaster Artist, which was very well adapted by James Franco. And we have a couple of comedy films by Trey Parker. We have Cannibal the Musical, Orgasmo, which is a very funny film, Basketball, Team America World Police, Le Dinner de Combs, which is a French comedy film. The 60s Batman movie starring Adam West. A couple of Kevin Smith films. We have Dogma and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Dinner for Schmucks, which is apparently based on Le Dinner de Combs. Hall Pass, Stephen Merchant is a huge standout in this film. I quite enjoyed his performance in particular. Dan in Real Life. Get Smart. Date Night. Then we have the Adam Sandler collection, of which several of these films really are just guilty pleasure movies of mine, but I've kind of kept this collection together over the years, literally because it's kind of a gimmick, it seems. 
at this point for my collection overviews. So we have Going Overboard, which was his first and arguably his worst movie out of his entire filmography. Then we have Airheads, which I quite liked. Bella Madison. Happy Gilmore. Bulletproof. The Wedding Singer. The Waterboy. Big Daddy. Little Nicky. Punch Drunk Love, which I actually rewatched of late, and honestly, I really did misjudge this movie. I enjoyed it a lot more on the second viewing. Mr. Deeds. Eight Crazy Nights. Anger Management. Fifty First Dates. Spanglish. The Longest Yard. Click. Rain Over Me, which is a very evocative film, one that really doesn't belong amongst the rest. It's that good of a film. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. You Don't Mess With The Zohan. Bedtime Stories. Funny People. Grown Ups. Just go with it. That happened. That's my boy. Zoolander. Keeping the Faith. The Perks of Being a Wallflower, a phenomenal film. The Breakfast Club, an 80s classic. The Kingsman movies, we have The Secret Service, which I really enjoyed. And The Golden Circle, which was pretty underwhelming in my opinion. The Rush Hour movies, Rush Hour. Rush Hour 2. And of course, Rush Hour 3. The Life Aquatic. Hitch. It Happened One Night. Gilda. Hancock. Little Man. Daddy Daycare. And Employee of the Month. The comedies continue with Bad Santa. Mrs. Doubtfire, a Robin Williams classic. School of Rock. Ghostbusters. Be Kind Rewind. Borat. Super. Arthur. Night at the Museum. Liar Liar. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yes Man. The Cable Guy. 21 and Over. Get Him to the Greek. The 40 Year Old Virgin. Big. Elf. Office Space, a phenomenal comedy by Mike Judge. Superbad. Jojo Rabbit. The Jackass Collection, so we have Jackass the Movie. Number 2. 2.5. 3. And 3.5. The Bad Grandpa Movie. Then we have the three volumes of the MTV series, so we have number one, number two, and then number three is kind of a weird one. I think this was part of a box set, and I just kept this because it was obviously the correct disc, but it's just in a little thin case, which I guess was part of a bigger collection. The Lost Tapes. Then we have the Monty Python movies, so we have Life of Brian, The Holy Grail, and The Meaning of Life. The Actors, which is a very funny film starring Michael Caine and Dylan Moran. In the Loop, which is the movie, I don't know whether or not I would really term it's like a conclusive movie, um, but it's the film to the series The Thick of It, which is a fantastic British comedy starring Peter Capaldi. A Chris Morris film, Four Lions. Magician starring David Mitchell and Robert Webb. Now we have some films starring Rowan Atkinson. We have Mr. Bean's Holiday and the Ultimate Disaster movie. The Johnny English films. English Reborn and Strikes Again. 
Love Actually, A Fantastic Fair of Everything, Big Nothing, Run Fat Boy Run, Human Traffic the Remixed Edition, Cemetery Junction, The Invention of Lying, Ghost Town, then we have a few stand-up comedies. We have a Vicious Circle by Dan Cook. A couple of Lee Mac comedies. So we have Lee Mac Live, Going Out Live, and Hit the Road Mac. Little Britain Live, featuring the iconic characters created by Matt Lucas and David Williams. Bill Bailey Tinsel Worm. Then we have some animated features. We have the Free Cracking Avengers from Wallace and Gromit. The movie, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, and then the follow-up short film, A Matter of Loaf and Death. The Triplets of Belleville, which is a very funny animated French film. The Heavy Metal movies, the original from 1981. And then the sequel, Heavy Metal Fuck 2, also known as Heavy Metal 2000. Beavis and Butthead Do America. The South Park movie, Bigger, Longer and Uncut. The Simpsons movie, Space Jam, The Iron Giant, Batman Under the Red Hood, which is surprisingly very good. I really enjoyed um, the performance of The Joker by John DiMaggio. Now we have more sort of Disney-oriented stuff. We have the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy. Uh, I skipped over the fourth film, really didn't like that movie, but I do still have the fifth one, Salzar's Revenge. Then moving into more so Disney classics, we have Pinocchio, The Black Cauldron, which I very much enjoyed, Dumbo, Hercules, which is a very enjoyable film, and my personal favourite Disney classic, Robin Hood. I'm rounding off my animated movie collection, we have a few more Disney classics, continuing with Lilo and Stitch, the sequel, Stitch Has a Glitch. Stitch the Movie, and Leroy and Stitch, Zootropolis, which I genuinely really enjoyed, a very funny film, and the classic The Nightmare Before Christmas, which is a fantastic stop-motion animated film. Then we have my Pixar collection on DVD with the one through to free box set of the Toy Story movies. Then we have the short films of Terror and That Time Forgot. My favourite Pixar movie, Monsters, Inc. Ratatouille. A Bug's Life. Finding Nemo. The Incredibles. And Wally. -E. And so that takes us into the television side of the collection, which I do apologise for how repetitive this is probably going to become. Beginning, of course, with The Simpsons, one of my favourite animated shows. So we have season one, season two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Love the cover on this one, especially the eye of either Kang or Kodos there. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, season eighteen. Season 19, and of course, Season 20. Next we have my preferred favourite of the animated shows by Matt Groening, and that of course being Futurama with Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, Season 4, and then we jump into the movies that kind of split the show in half with Bender's Big Score, The Beast with a Billion Backs, Bender's Game, and Into the Wild Green Yonder. Then we have the series when it was picked up by Comedy Central with Season 5, Season 6, 
Season 7, and of course, Season 8. For more on Future Armor, you can check out my collection overview, going over pretty much the whole series in its entirety. Then we have the complete collection of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, a very slim and overall fantastic addition to have in the collection. And then rounding off this shelf, we have the complete collection of Drawn Together, a very interesting animated show. Next up we have the complete series of South Park, which is one of my all-time favourite TV shows, beginning of course with Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, which is a personal favourite of mine, Season 4, Season 5, which has some classic episodes on there, such as Scott Tenenbaum Must Die, Season 6, another personal favourite, Season 7, Season 8, Season 9, Season 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which is the Region 1 copy thanks to the infamous 200 and 201 debacle, with those episodes being erased from the other versions of that DVD outside of the United States. Season 15, Season 16, Season 17, Season 18, Season 19, Season 20, 21, 22, and 23. Next up we have the complete series of King of the Hill, beginning with Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, Season 4, Season 5, 6, 7, Season 8, which is a personal favourite of mine, Season 9, Season 10, Season 11, 12, and the final season, Season 13. Then we move into the complete series of Archer, which is a very funny show of Season 1. Season 2, Season 3, Season 4, Archer Vice, Season 5, a very memorable season, Season 6, 7, Season 8, Dreamland, and Season 9, Danger Island. I would love to see the other seasons of the show released onto DVD to fill out the collection. Then we move into American Dad with Season 1. Then we jump to Volume 2. They renamed it since the episodes are kind of out of sync from the original broadcast airings. Volume 3. Volume 4 featuring my favourite episode of American Dad, Tearjerker, a fantastic episode. Volume 5. Volume 6. 7. 8. 9. 10. 11, 12, and rounding off the American Dead collection with volume 13. And we also have the compilation disc, Seth MacFarlane's Cavalcade of Cartoon Comedy, which I would highly recommend. Next we have the complete collection on DVD of Family Guy, beginning with season 1, 2, 3, Four, which has some of my personal favourite episodes on there. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Then we have the unusually large t-shirt edition box sets with both season 12 and Season 13, which I would love to make some kind of customised fin case versions for these to match the rest of the show onwards from Season 7. Then we have Season 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and Season 19. Then we have Stewie Griffin, The Untold Story, which was my first dip into Family Guy, surprisingly. And then Family Guy Uncovered, which was a bonus disc I believe included in one of the 1 through 2 
six box sets, I believe, if memory serves. It's one that you can definitely skip. It just has some optional sort of extra audio commentaries on certain episodes that aren't included on the rest of the series released onto DVD. And we have these Star Wars episodes with Blue Harvest and Something Dark Side. I own It's a Trap on Blu-ray. Then we have the fairly underwhelming Cleveland show with Season 1, Season 2, and then 3 and 4 are very difficult to get hold of on DVD nowadays with Season 3 there and Season 4. Next we have the complete series of a very short-lived show, The Critic, which is one of my personal favourites. Then we move into Bob's Burgers with Season 1, Season 2, 3, 4... Five, and then six and seven, sadly, are bootlegs, which I've been meaning to upgrade for a little while. Season six and season seven. Next up, we have the complete series of the MTV show Daria, which is one of my personal favourites. Then we have Beavis and Butthead, the Mike Judge collections for volumes one through to three. And then the rebooted series from 2011 in volume four. And we have the complete series of Dexter's Laboratory. Some Nickelodeon shows with Spongebob Squarepants, Season 1 and Season 2. The Ren and Stimpy Show complete series across three volumes. And we have the complete series of Rocco's Modern Life, a fantastic animated show. Complete series of Invader Zim with both Volume or Season 1 and Season 2. And we have the TV movie Enter the Floppers, which is a custom DVD that I put together. And then we have the Invader Zim bonus features disc, which is very difficult to get hold of. This came in the very expensive collector's set in the shape of Zim's house. And for the bottom shelf, we have more classic animation, continuing with the complete series of the Animaniacs. Pink in the Brain, volumes 1, 2, and 3. Batman the Animated Series, Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then we have Mask of the Phantasm, which is a very enjoyable film. The complete series of the original Teen Titans cartoon with Season 1, 2, 3. Number 4, which has one of my personal favourite endings to a season for Teen Titans. Season 5. And the movie Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo. Robot Chicken Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, and Season 4. And we have the Star Wars shorts, Robot Chicken Star Wars, Episode 2 in the limited edition slipcover, and Episode 3, which was my personal favourite. The complete series of Gravity Falls, a tremendous TV show with some of the best storytelling I have ever seen. And we have an anime series, As a Manga Dio, which I've had in the collection for a very long time, one that I watched many years ago. And because of how much I enjoyed it when I watched it initially, I've just not really had the heart to get rid of it. I don't see myself re-watching this show anytime soon, but it's just one that'll probably stick around. More classic animation with the Hanna-Barbera side of the collection, with the complete series of the Flintstones, the Jetsons, Scooby-Doo Where Are You Seasons 1 and 2, The Yogi Bear Show, Top Cat, which is a personal favourite of mine, The Secret Squirrel Show, Quick Draw McGraw, which is actually a custom-made DVD of mine. I would love to see this show released by Warner Archive one day, but... Sadly, due to licensing issues with a lot of the audio tracks from this series, that looks to be very unlikely. Walligator. Peter Potamus, which is a fantastic transfer of the original show onto DVD. Lippy the Lion and Hardy Haha. And then the complete classic collections of Tom and Jerry. Moving along into British comedies, we begin with the Ricky Gervais collection, starting off with The Office. The David Brent movie, Life on the Road, which I thought was very good. The complete series of extras, which is honestly one of my favourite Ricky Gervais projects. I really enjoyed the supporting cast in this series, from Ashley Jensen and Stephen Merchant in particular. Then we have the Ricky Gervais live stand-up shows. 
and the fourth one, Science, which I thought was very good as well. The complete series of the Ricky Gervais show, the animated ramblings of Carl Pelkinson in particular, so that's series one through to three. Hello Ladies, which is a very underrated series starring Stephen Merchant, very funny show. Life's Too Short, starring Warwick Davis, and the conclusive special. An Idiot Abroad, featuring Carl Pilkinson, so that's series one and two. And then the shorter third series, starring Warwick Davis, no pun intended. Then we have The Moaning of Life, The Moaning of Life 2. The complete series of Derek, with series one, two, and the special. A very short-lived comedy series starring Nick Frost, Mr. Sloan, which I thought was overall very good. It's a shame it didn't get renewed for a second series. Then we have 1 through to 5 of the Lee Mack comedy Not Going Out, Series 6, and Series 7. Mongrels, Series 1, and Series 2, a very funny show from BBC Free. The complete series of Mr. Bean, starring, of course, Rowan Atkinson with Volume 1, 2, and 3. There is a fourth volume which just has some bonus features on it, so not really something that I'm overly interested in. Series 1 and 2 of Big Train, a very funny British comedy. We Know Where You Live, the remix edition. The complete series of Black Book, Series 1, Series 2, and Series 3. A very funny comedy by Christopher Morris, Brass Eye, which is absolutely fantastic. Nathan Barley, which is a very underrated British comedy. Then we move into one of my all-time favourites, Peep Show, where the writing of this show is unlike anything I have seen before. A very funny series and certainly one of the best for its very unique camera angle perspective, with everything basically being a point of view shot. The IT Crowd, which is, again, a very clever series, very well written. Then we have the complete series of The Inbetweeners, which is a show that, to be honest, over the years I felt hasn't really had the staying power. Then we also have 1 through to 5 of Friday Night Dinner, which is one of my personal favourite Channel 4 comedies. Still need to grab Series 6, but this series is one that definitely does have staying power. It's one of the most quotable shows, in my honest opinion. Next up we have the complete series of Spaced, which is a fantastic series by Edgar Wright. Then we have the series of The Thick of It, which I mentioned before when talking about In The Loop. So we have series 1 and 2, The Specials, series 3, and series 4. Then we have the Russell T. Davis era of Doctor Who and the Sarah Jane Adventures. So we have the complete first series in the TARDIS-shaped box set. Then we have Series 2, which is a lenticular-style box set, which actually came in a Cyberman-shaped box set, which I've obviously taken off the shelf due to the size of that set, but definitely a great collector's piece. Then we have Series 3, starring John Sim as the Master. And then we have the limited edition Honeycomb-style slipcover for the fourth series, which was my personal favourite. Then we have the specials, we have The Next Doctor, starring David Morsey. Then the Planet of the Dead Easter special. The Waters of Mars, which is a very creepy Doctor Who story. And then the end for David Tennant in The End of Time, parts 1 and 2, with the return of John Sims' Master. The 50th Anniversary special, The Dead the Doctor. Then we have the complete series of the Sarah Jane Adventures, which surprisingly holds up pretty well. The complete series of Primeval, which is a very short-lived British sci-fi series, which was one of my personal favourites when growing up. So you have series 1 and 2. Series 3, where it sadly got cancelled, but then it was revived for a fourth and, of course, a fifth series, where it sadly ended on yet another cliffhanger. I really do hope one day that may get resolved in some other medium. Then we have series 1 through to 4 of Star Trek The Next Generation in these limited edition clamshell style plastic box sets. The complete series of the Channel 4 series Misfits, which overall I thought was very enjoyable. 
kind of fell off the rails in terms of quality towards the end, but for the most part I found it to be fairly consistent. So that's series 1 through to 5, and then we have the TV miniseries Chernobyl. Series 1 through to 3 of No Offense, which is a very good police procedural drama by Paul Abbott. Then we move into the John Sim portion of the collection, various dramas featuring this actor that I'm a very big fan of. Starting off with Series 1 of The Village. Then we have Mad Dogs, Series 1 through to 4. We have Series 1 and 2 in this box set. And then Series 3, which I thought was very enjoyable. And then Series 4, which was very short and kind of a lackluster ending, I'll be honest. But I enjoyed what these actors brought to the table when together. Then we have Life on Mars, Series 1 and Series 2. And then we have the follow-up series, Ashes to Ashes, which I overall found to be just as good as Life on Mars, if not better in some instances, but for a follow-up it was overall very enjoyable. The complete series of The Lakes, which is a very powerful and very dark drama series, likewise with Exile, which is very well performed, particularly from John Sim and Jim Broadbent, their chemistry together, with them being father and son, Jim Broadbent's character suffering with Alzheimer's disease, was a very interesting perspective for both characters. Prey, which was kind of underwhelming, and State of Play, which was a very well-written drama by Paul Abbott once again. Alias, which I really enjoyed for the most part, very well acted, particularly from Jennifer Gardner, who played the main character, Sidney Bristow. The series overall is one that I would love to rewatch one day, but it kind of fell apart around series four and five, where it got surprisingly a little bit too fantasy for me, just a little bit unbelievable, even for a spy thriller series. The complete series of Wentworth or Wentworth Prison. As is known here in the UK, as you can tell between the differences of the UK and then the Australian copies of the show, that bizarrely changed the title, but overall the series in itself, very enjoyable, definitely some of the most intense television I have watched in recent years, with the series being set in a women's prison in Australia. Then we have the first volume of the Battlestar Galactic prequel, Caprica. Series 1 through to 3 of Mad Men, a very well acted series for sure. Series 1 through to 3 of iZombie, it looks very unlikely for series 4 and 5 to come out on DVD, which is a shame, but the show in itself was very well acted, especially from the main actress Rose McIver, who kind of had to change up her acting as kind of a gimmicky sort of thing in every single episode to portray a different incarnation of herself as a zombie. Humans series 1 and 2, the complete series 1 through to 8 of Dexter, and then we have the complete series of Prison Break series 1, series 2, series 3 which is a personal favourite of mine, series 4, the final season as they called it, and then they brought it back for a one-off special with season 5 which was a far more fitting Conclusion a lot more satisfactory than what the fourth season brought to the table. One of my all-time favourite shows, Breaking Bad, which I've been looking to upgrade to Blu-ray at some point. I do have Better Call Saul on Blu-ray, so it only seems fitting to have both shows on the better format. But definitely one of my all-time favourites, incredible character building for Walter White, portrayed by Brian Cranston. The complete series of Firefly, a very short-lived series that was unfortunately very much mishandled by 20th Century Fox, and that concluded with the movie Serenity. Then we have the complete series of Castle, which is a very good series, one of my personal favourites, again starring Nathan Fillion. And we round off this shelf with the first season of House. And for the bottom shelf, we have various American sitcoms and comedies, beginning with The US Office, which is a personal favourite of mine. So we have series 1 through to 5, season 6, 7, 8, and 9. Then we have the complete series of Scrubs, which is a very enjoyable show, bar the final season, which I'm not really a big fan of. 
the complete series of Malcolm in the Middle series 1 through to 7. The complete series of Parks and Recreation series 1 through to 7, which is a show that has stayed with me over the years. Definitely a preferred favourite American sitcom. I absolutely love some of the iconic characters featured throughout, such as Ron Swanson. The complete series of Workaholics, which I did a video a little while ago now, going over the complete series in its entirety, kind of recommending some preferred favourite episodes from the show. Definitely one I would recommend checking out. Then we have the complete series of The League, which I wouldn't mind doing a similar video on to that, what I've done previously on Workaholics. Then we have It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Season 1 and 2, Season 3, Season 4, 5, 6, and The Christmas Special, Season 1 of Community, Season 1 and 2 of Seinfeld, Series 1 through to 3 of Arrested Development, one of my all-time favourite comedy shows. Then we have the rebooted fourth season. And then rounding off the collection overview, we have the complete series of Friends. So we have season one, two, three, four, which has some of my personal favorite episodes. Likewise with series five, series six, seven, eight, nine, and the final season, season 10. So that's going to do it for my complete DVD collection overview for 2022. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave me a like down below. Let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular you would like to see an individual video of. Of course, there will be a Blu-ray collection overview coming out in the coming months, so stay tuned for that. And for more content, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Are you threatening me?